faith does not deny the existence of a problem. But faith helps us to see the problems from the perspective of God's faithfulness. Grace and peace to you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, the reason we are connected here today from different parts of the world in different time zones, speaking different languages, is because the faithfulness of God. It is because He is faithful to His promise to never leave us nor forsake us. If you look at the track record of your life, you will not lack reasons to appreciate God for His faithfulness in your life. So let us take a moment again to give thanks to God for enable us to enter into this new year 2024 and to be here in this service today. Thank you, Jesus. And yes, this new year for many represents a new beginning, a new dawn. We have made so many new resolutions and plans for the year ahead. We want breakthrough, we want success, we want progress in life. And there is nothing wrong with that. God also wants the best for us. But remember, it is not the year that makes us new. We make the year new by the way we live it. So I want to ask you, how do you want to live this year? Do you want financial prosperity? Do you want to enjoy a good health? Do you want to reconcile your family, your marriage? Or are you looking for your partner from heaven? Do you want promotion or to upgrade your academic levels? Those are good desires. But let me remind you again, over and over again, that the first place we must prosper is in our spiritual life. How many resolutions have you made to prosper, to progress, to advance in your spiritual life, in your relationship with God? Many may have said, this new year I'm going to grow closer to God. I'm going to be more serious with my relationship with God. I will read the Bible more. I will pray more. I will go to church. I will give up bad habits and so on and so forth. But people of God, how many of us will actually act on those resolutions and maintain them until the end. How many of us will remain faithful to them, to fulfill them? Remember what I said at the beginning. We are here today because of God's faithfulness. And today, while it is called today, as Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13 says, we have a great opportunity to recognize His faithfulness. And recognizing His faithfulness will help us not only to appreciate God for His goodness throughout the year 2023, but to prepare us for the challenges and the blessings that lie ahead in 2024. And it will help us to keep faithful to God. And that's why today I want to talk about your response to God's faithfulness. So to start, let us read what the Bible says about God's faithfulness. Please go with me to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Therefore know that the Lord your God He is God 
the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Pay attention to those words, therefore know. God is concerned that his people know who he is. These words, therefore know, means with all your heart. God wants us to know with all our heart, to learn with all our heart, to pay attention with all our heart that He is God. He wants us to understand that He's not a God, but the one true God. God above all and there is no equal to Him. And God wants us not only to know that He is God, but also that He is the faithful God. Faithfulness is part of God's nature. Faithful is His name. He wants us to know that, that He doesn't change or vary that God keeps his promises. That's why Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will not do? God's faithfulness is forever. Psalm 117 verse 2. Because God has no beginning and He has no end. He is eternal. And as we continue reading Deuteronomy 7, 9, the Bible says, God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. What a faithful God we serve. So I go back to the question. What is your response to God's faithfulness? And to elaborate more the point I want to share with you today, I want to use the promise God gave us in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10. I will be your God and you shall be my people. What a wonderful promise, brothers and sisters. But I want you to think about this. If God is our God and we are his people, why do so many of us get anxious when the fulfillment of his promises seems to delay? Why do we give up on our resolutions to prosper spiritually when trials and temptation comes? Why do we panic when the sound of bad news comes? Or when our situation in the natural does not change? Why do we doubt why do we complain? Why we get discouraged? Or why do we fight blood and flesh when we face life situation? If the Bible says that He is our God and we are His people. Why? Why? And I would like to suggest that it's because we are like the wave of the sea, tossed and blown by the winds of life from side to side. We are too indecisive. We are not consistent. In the book of James, chapter 1, from verse 6 to 8, the Bible tells us, why, in spite of so many manifestations of God's faithfulness, we often fail to recognize it and trust God? Let's read together James chapter 1 from verse 6 to 8. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, 
For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. In this Bible verse, people of God, we learn that faith is a trust that arises out of the fact that the other party is honest, is faithful, and dependable. Faith is man's response to God's faithfulness. The moment you realize that God is reliable and faithful, your faith will simultaneously grow. When you realize that he is trustworthy, our faith will simultaneously grow. God wants us to know that he is faithful so we can have confidence in and assurance of his promises, whatever life brings. But what's happening to many of us today? One day we believe, next day we don't believe. One day we see the glass as half full and next day we see it as a half empty. One day we worship God with our lips and next day with the same lips we curse God. We are not consistent people of God. We allow our focus to be easily changed. One minute we are looking at God, next minute we look at our situation. One minute we declare God's faithful in our lives, next minute we despair and see God in bad light. And I believe that the cause of the inconsistency in our lives lies in the fact that we have alternatives. We have plan A, we have plan B, we have plan C, and even some of us have plan Z. We trust man's majority, people's majority, but not God's authority. We seek men's opinion, but not God's opinion. That's why we are like the waves. Because we go wherever the crowd leads. We give priority to whatever the man said to us, but not to what God is saying to us about our situation. God wants us to be consistent in our faith. He wants us to see that sometimes he allows to reach a point where all our human resources are exhausted so that we can see that he is faithful and we can trust in someone that is stronger, wiser and more powerful than ourselves or any other human being so that we can see his faithfulness and that faith has no alternatives. God just wants us to trust him. He showed himself faithful to us so we may be faithful to him. Double-mindedness is very, very dangerous. Doubt, indecision and inconsistency do not allow us to grow in faith and thus to not relate effectively with God. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, the Bible says, But without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If you ask the great heroes of faith in the Bible, they will tell us that their conviction of God's faithfulness in their lives kept them 
consistent and steadfast in their faith in the midst of the most challenging moments in their life. And they will tell you how they came out stronger from these moments. If we go to Daniel chapter 6, we read the story when the king gave an order. And when Daniel heard the king's edict, the Bible says that he went to his house, he knelt down, he prayed, he gave thanks to God as he used to do before. Daniel was not overwhelmed by the death threat he received. He continued praying. He continued giving thanks to God. Daniel did not panic or abandon his faith because of this. This situation didn't even change the course of his prayer. He continued giving thanks to God. Daniel remained faithful. I mean, he remained constant in his faith. And Daniel's response to God's faithfulness rescued him from the lion's den. And his faithful God was glorified. Joseph, a man who passed through very extreme situations, from the dry pit to slavery, from slavery to prison, but from prison to the throne. Why? Because he never lost his faith in God, in the promises God gave him through those dreams. When Joseph was tempted by Potiphar's wife in Genesis 39 verse 9, Joseph's only concern was to not sin against God who had given him so much grace before his master. Joseph acknowledged and recognized God's faithfulness and remain constant in his faith, believing that God had called him to a greater purpose than slavery or the fleeting pleasures of sin. Faith is man's response to God's faithfulness. What about Job, people of God? The man that lost everything. He lost his family, properties, reputation, health, everything. But he never lost his faith. This Bible character received a direct attack from Satan. But he never lost his faith in God's faithfulness. In Job chapter 19 verse 25, Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives. People of God, what a deep conviction that God would redeem him from his seemingly irredeemable trial. Even when the people closest to Job suggested to him to deny God, he didn't. And we all know what happened in the end. God restored double all that Job had lost. God wants us to know his faithfulness, his trustworthiness, as Joseph, Job, Daniel knew. Their conviction in God's faithfulness allowed them to be faithful to God to remain consistent in their faith. By faith they overcame. People of God, let me encourage you today more. Faith does not deny the existence of a problem, but faith Help us to see the problems from the perspective of God's faithfulness. 
faith help us to see that everything works for good to those that love him to those that are the called according to his purpose Romans 8:28 faith is a lifestyle of trusting in the faithfulness of God trusting that he is working out the answer so people of God when you have the conviction of God's faithfulness you will not listen to the voice of panic fear pain doubt believe in God's promises for your life and he will do it at his time and according to his will believe that today Jesus has the answer for your situation and that he is faithful to fulfill his promises people of God and i pray that this message help us to act on and maintain the resolutions we have made to grow spiritually this new year i pray that this message help us to keep faithful to God throughout the year in Jesus name